In this lecture, we'll talk about how to avoid dangerous phishing emails. First of all, what's phishing? Phishing, and its clever spelling, refers to emails that are tricks or attempts to trick you into giving your login information, password, bank details, or other sensitive information to somebody who's masquerading as a bank, an online retailer, or other official service that you might do business with. In other words, they're trying to scam you. There are some things that you can look for in phishing emails that will tip you off, and we'll look at a couple of examples now. Here's an example from something claiming to be the iTunes Store. It says, alert, unusual activity in your account, and it asks you to click to process to confer, click to complete the process to confirm your informations, and it gives you a link to click on. There are some clues on this email that can help us determine whether or not this is a legitimate alert. First, the unusual capitalization, spelling, and grammatical mistakes in the email give us an indication it's probably not an official alert or a professional communication. Second, the email address that it's from doesn't appear to be an official address that is affiliated with Apple or iTunes. And finally, the link that it wants us to click on, if we were to click on it, which would be foolish, goes to a website that's obviously not the iTunes store or apple.com. Here's another example. You have been chosen in the UK online national lottery to win 850,000 pounds. There's some more clues we can look at in this one that tell us whether or not this is real. Besides the other things like capitalization, spelling, grammatical issues, we can look at the email address this one's from and what it wants us to click on and who we should email to confirm our winnings. And we can see that they belong to what look like personal accounts not the official UK online national lottery, if there even is such a thing. Also, we can apply a little common sense here. Even if there was such a thing as the UK national online lottery, I have never been to the UK and haven't entered to win such a lottery. And if you haven't either, you can be reasonably sure they're not actually trying to give you money, but rather the other way around. Let's look at one more example. Here's a bank communication that appears to want you to log in to look at an important new security upgrade notice. Again, we can apply the same rules that we've looked at before and check for things like grammar errors, mistakes in spelling, and things that just don't seem right, like the graphics that look would look probably a little bit more professional in an official communication. Also, we can apply some common sense to this one. If I've never banked at, or have never even heard of, NatWest Bank, which is the case with me, I can be reasonably sure that I don't need to log in to look at this special security upgrade notice, and that if I were to click on that button, it would take me to a page that would probably try to get me to enter my email, my password, my bank details, or other sensitive information. In short, here are some things you can do to stay safe from phishing emails. One, never click on unexpected links or attachments. This applies to a lot of online security practices. Basically, if you weren't expecting an attachment or a link, from somebody, even if it appears to come from somebody that you know, don't click on it. If you really want to find out if it's legitimate or valid, do some research, look on the web, or email the person who sent it and ask them what it is and if they really meant to send it to you. Chances are it's malicious or fake and has been sent by software that's trying to trick you. Always check the address that the email appears to be from and the destination where the link will take you if you click on it. But be careful here, because both of those can be faked. If you, look at, if you look at them and find something that makes you suspicious or is obviously fake, that's a good indication that it's fake and you should stay away. But just because it looks legitimate doesn't necessarily mean that it is. There's some pretty advanced trickery out there. So one other thing you can do is verify independently. For example, if you receive a notice from PayPal about some account activity that looks suspicious, Rather than clicking on the link in the email that they sent you, which might be fake, you could manually open your browser and go to paypal.com and log in to see if the account activity that they mentioned is actually real. Chances are it's fake, and by verifying it independently, you've avoided falling into the trap of the person who's fishing for your information. Finally, there's a lot of art to this. It's not all science. And trust your gut. If something seems fishy, or too good to be true? It probably is. Do some research, ask somebody you trust, 
or just delete it. There's a lot to worry about out there, but the internet can be a one, a wonderful, fun place. Don't be worried. Use your head, trust your gut, and remember, be safe out there.